The way that companies are hiring has changed. And so if you're trying to break into the data science field, your resume and those independent projects that you do need to change as well. You essentially have to adapt to a rapidly shifting landscape. The way that companies are investing in initiatives tells us a lot about how you change your resume and change your independent projects, even maybe change the course of some of the classes that you're taking in order to be far more successful in this marketplace. So what's happening? 39 U.S. tech companies are laying people off uh, basically since the beginning of November or beginning of April. Meta, Uber, NVIDIA, Snap, tons of other companies are talking about slowing down or hiring freezes altogether. So we still have a really good, hot labor market. But those companies are essentially signaling a shift in the way that businesses are looking at data scientists, the way that they're hiring data scientists. The biggest change and the biggest challenge for you trying to break into the field is there's going to be fewer internships and there will be fewer entry-level positions available, meaning more competition. And in a minute, I'm going to get to exactly what you do to make yourself appeal as much as possible in this new hiring environment. Because a lot of people that are entering the market right now don't understand how it's changed and their old resume and their old project portfolio they're not going to be able to compete with you if you make a few small shifts. So it's going to become more competitive, but the opportunities are definitely there. And it's not like hiring has gone away altogether. Data science is still a great field to try to get into. You just have to change your approach. Now, the first thing that you have to understand is who's hiring. What types of companies will continue to hire? Which ones are worth applying to, worth putting the effort into? Because sending your resume into a black hole of a company that's about to go on a hiring freeze in a month or two, it's a huge waste of time. You can end up going on interviews and they close the position after you've spent a couple of weeks trying to get into the company. So the companies that you want to target are any company that does enterprise software, enterprise you know, software as a service, SaaS companies, your worker productivity, workforce automation, that's huge. Cybersecurity is also big. Companies that you want to avoid, companies that rely on consumer discretionary spend, those things that aren't staples, those products that you don't necessarily have to have, but are nice to have. You'll see spending reductions in those companies. Anything in the attention economy, anything that's reliant, heavily reliant on advertising like Facebook and Snap, those are companies that are going to be negatively inf impacted and you're going to see a slowdown there. So you want to focus on those companies where you have the highest probability of getting all the way through the process before a hiring freeze ends up occurring. So how is demand changing? And this is where it begins to really affect how you want to position yourself, what skills you want to focus on acquiring the most, and how you change your resume. Companies are focused on production near-term value creation. They want those things that immediately make them money. So they're looking for you to be able to contribute to those types of projects. So they're looking at data engineering skills very heavily, machine learning engineering skills as well, and ML ops. So those three categories of capabilities are the ones that you want to put on your resume most prominently and the ones you want to spend the most time learning right now. If you're just coming to the end of your learning journey, those are the three capability sets that you want to put the most emphasis on. And like I said, highlight it in your resume. Make sure you're talking about how much of the ML engineering, data engineering, or ML ops side that you understand so that you stand out to a hiring manager who's looking, again, for short-term wins. They're looking for it gets into production, it gets into users' hands, and it provides value immediately. And deep learning and a lot of those other more forward-looking technologies. Those capabilities are just not in demand as much anymore. So you can begin to scale back your focus on those more forward-looking, research-focused. They sound cool, but companies just aren't focused on them anymore. So take them out of your resume, move them to the bottom, focus your learning path on more pragmatic skills, things like software engineering, Software engineering and architecture are in huge demand. Understanding the cloud, understanding containers, Kubernetes, any of the platforms that you deploy to production on, 
any of the automation software that you use to become more productive as a data scientist, all of those, those are huge. Put those in your resume. You highlight those and you're going to stand out from the people that were very focused on deep learning and more model architecture than value architecture. And finally, ML ops platforms, anything with model quality, deployment, monitoring, and maintenance, put those platforms and any experience you have with those parts of the ML ops workflow specifically. And like I said in another video earlier, always focus on outcomes. If you have outcomes, it's way more important that you put those on there than you put skills. But if you don't, let's talk about projects because there are tons of projects that you can do that will prove out that you have capabilities and make you stand out from all of the other people who are doing sort of hypothetical Kaggle type uh, projects that don't attract any attention from a hiring manager. They're not looking for, remember, those really far out there or infeasible types of projects. So your focus is on pragmatic, practical, I can get it in production and it's going to provide value. You are a business focused, value focused, user centric, production quality. Those are all great words to use in your resume because they tell me you're here to produce value, not produce research or prototypes. And that's the biggest difference right now is the hiring managers are focused, very, very focused. And I'm going to keep saying this on getting your work into production. So here's the kind of projects that are going to showcase your ability to do that. Any of the traditional types of projects, they could still play. Things like consuming data from an API or scraping from multiple sites and aggregating it into a data pipeline, that could work. I mean, deploying a model of, uh, as a service to production, that could work. But there are better, way better opportunities for you to showcase your capability. And remember, your objective is to stand out from everyone else. So you want to do the types of projects that appeal to what uh, senior leaders are asking their data science teams to do right now. So let's follow a couple of trends. One of them is observability data. What is that? It's logging. Uh, logs come from everywhere. And there is so much now as companies do digital transformation. So much of the data that's going into their pipelines is observability data. And they biggest challenge, they don't have the ability to do anything with it because there's so much of it. They don't know what to do. So, hey, we're data scientists. That's kind of the things that we do. So one of the great ways that you can incorporate this trend of observability data and trying to make it actionable, trying to figure out what to do based on tons of logs that no one can go through manually, try logging, you know, your site uptime. So pick 30, 40, 50 different types of sites log their uptime. When do they have lags? When do they, I mean, look at your basic website metrics, start gathering them in an automated way and begin to predict downtime. What are the indicators of downtime? What are the things that you would look at in the logs? You can see how practical this is talking about website downtime, just scraping, going out, making sure it's up. Is it up? Is it up? What happened right before? What other data points can you log? Those are all huge, huge. When it comes to a hiring manager, looking at your resume, that's big stuff. Um, content publication, frequency and topic analysis. There are so many sites out there that throw content out all the time. Great NLP project. And it's just basic NLP. We're not talking pie in the sky, like crazy deep learning stuff. Just going out, figuring out how often Maybe a particular author publishes on a site or just across the site. How often an individual topic is published? What are the most frequently? Is there a timing on each one of the topics? Can you find some insights by logging what topics are being written about more frequently? Does it change dramatically? How closely related to announcements on one website is another website's content. Is there a way that you can predict what topics will be more prevalent tomorrow? Because newsflash, you can. So those are huge. Those are great types of projects that you can do. They're easy. It's just basic scraping. You're not doing anything crazy, but you're showcasing your ability to put something out there, to publish it into production. That's usable. Someone can go to that site, especially a hiring manager, and just look at it. You've pushed it out there. It's serving inference. That's huge. 
it tells me you can get product to production and you can build something that's interesting, that's compelling, that might do something that's very similar to what I need you to do. If you have you know, a process that you do, automate it. A workflow that's annoying, automate it. Those are huge projects right now. Even if it doesn't have anything to do with data science or machine learning, if it just touches data, if you show that you can do workflow automation, that, that massive. So throw one of those projects in if you can. Identify some sort of workflow that you can automate. Maybe it's something that your friends are working on. Maybe it's something that your classmates are working on or just something that's a pain to you. Automate it. You know, curating content, trying to figure out what you should read today. That's a great project. And again, it's really tying into a couple of the other ones where you go out, gather some content, figure out what you would find most interesting and create a recommender for yourself. So you're not going out and trolling all of these sites every day. You're automating your content feed. Image topic analysis is another good one because there's a ton of canned models out there that will essentially tell you what the topic, the focus of an image that's being published on social media or any place else is. And you can automate that. You are now not scrolling through Instagram anymore, scrolling through another site, looking for interesting content. It's going to curate a feed for you. And that's just one example. Yeah, it's kind of contrived, but you get the idea. You're showing your ability to automate a workflow, to take steps and use data to do some sort of automation. And again, that ties into those themes that are just huge right now. Finally, explainability is important. Users don't adopt what they don't understand and trust. And so explainability right now is a hot topic. Users want to understand why the model served the inference that it did. So if you can do something that explains one of your projects, like if you're doing the, um, the content recommender, what made that post worth reading? Just do a real quick like dashboard type visualization. That's easy. Every time the inference gets served, hey, here's the content and it's just a little snippet of, and here's why I thought you would like it. And site, you know, site, site reliability or predictive maintenance, predictive downtime. What is it, you know, here, this site we think is going to go down or is about to go down. And here's what made us think that's going to happen. And just like I said, real small dashboard, small visualization. Those are huge. Those types of projects are so much more real world. They're going to get the attention of hiring managers who are now much more focused on real world use cases. And that can be your opportunity to stand out from the crowd in a much more competitive field. So it's not the apocalypse. The hiring marketplace has slowed. It will continue to slow. It's not going to fall off, uh, you know, into zero or really go negative where more people are getting laid off than getting hired. If it does, it's, gonna, it's going to be a ways away. I'll just put it that way. So you still have opportunities. It's just going to be far fewer internships, far fewer entry-level jobs. You're going to have to go into a more competitive field. You need to change the language on your resume to be production focused, to talk about those more pragmatic skills of machine learning, engineering, data engineering, ML ops, and change your projects to really pander, I guess is a good way of saying it. Pander to what's top of mind for hiring managers right now, what senior leadership is asking them to do that is probably new, probably different. And so they're hiring for different skills and capabilities. They're looking at independent projects differently. If you tailor those projects to things like observability and explainability or workflow automation, you will stand out and be far more successful in your job hunt.